Alright, hi guys, what's up? So today I'm making buttermilk sugar cookie. So the first thing I'm going to do is add all of our butter. So I have three sticks of butter and you need four sticks of butter, but I only have three in here that I stopped in the room temperature. So I'm going to use this first and add all three. And then to make that other stick, I have here some Kerrygold butter. I'm going to add to make the other, the other eight tablespoons. I need to get very soft in. I'm going to add the butter into my mixer. And I'm going to add to this brown sugar and um, what you might call it, <clears throat> granulated regular sugar. So before I add the sugar, I'm going to beat this. I'm going to turn it on and let it beat. Oh, I'm going to put my mixer up here. So I'm going to let that beat. So all the sugar is going to get all the butter in there. I actually want to put a little bit more butter. Just a little bit. Oh, let me I don't know if that was exactly 8 tablespoons. Probably a little more. It doesn't matter. Butter is good anyway. I love butter. I don't need no more butter. Okay, our butter is looking greeny. To that butter, I'm going to add our sugars. Brown sugar. Oops. Some fell out. And when I measured it, I measured a little too, a tiny bit much. We're going to add our sugar, our granulated sugar. And now I'm going to beat that so it becomes nice and creamy. So let that get nice and creamy. And I have the flex edge beater attachment on. Once I get to a creamy consistency. So now that's looking very nice and creamy. I'll show you. Look how creamy that is. Nice and creamy. Now I'm going to add, oops, now I'm going to add our egg one at a time, and they need to be room temperature, and they were a little cold, and not the shell, one at a time, and you just going to beat it. So it becomes very nice and creamy. Now that that's all mixed, out the other way. I'm going to beat that with a little rock lightning. Okay, now that I wash my hands, I'm going to check on that. Oh, that's looking beautiful. Now look what this looks like. Nice and creamy and the eggs are all mixed in. Now to that mixture. I am going to add our drying our vanilla. And give that a mix. Make sure all that vanilla. And by the way, this vanilla that we have here is homemade vanilla. So in here is just vanilla beans and we add our own type of um, liquid to it. And in there, I think my parents put um, uh, uh, I know that's what I forgot your food, let me show you. So, um, this time. Yeah, 
like to get back on the party. I know it's the party, I do see them party and I love playing the party. But yeah, this is what we have, this bottle of vanilla. We're making another one. Because when I bought it, I bought, you know, you can choose how many beans you want. And I bought where you get 10. But we actually got, like, um, instead of 10, we got, like, 12. So we put 6 beans and 6. And, um, we got Bacardi to it. And then you leave this for about 8 weeks. And then you get vanilla. That one looks like this small now, it's not bad. And it's really good vanilla. It doesn't have all those harmful chemicals that you buy from the store and vanilla. So I have flour, five cups, baking soda. That baking soda was hard to find. And the baking soda I'm using is Bob's Red Mill baking soda. So, I had to buy it off Amazon because I went to a bunch of stores. I went to Walmart, I went to Target, to like a normal, you know, grocery store. You know, around here, ShopRite, I went there, Stop and Shop. I went everywhere, I couldn't find it. And I also even went to Whole Foods, and they carry a box of red mill. They didn't have that, so I ordered it off Amazon. Oh. And I got um, two of those, and one of the bags is in a thing, I have it in my covers here. A whole thing of that in here. And I add some salt. This is just sea salt. Oh, yeah, I'm it. gonna get this in there. I'm actually gonna take off my pouring shield because the hole is so small, like it's not gonna fit. So I'm going to add some of the dry ingredients. I'm gonna lower this to make it easier. Let me turn this to move the heater away from me like that so I can fit this. I'm gonna add that, I'm gonna give that a mix. And I'm gonna put the pouring shield back on so it doesn't explode everywhere. I'm kind of covering it too so you don't get flour dust. Okay, I'm gonna alternate with some buttermilk. And by the way, this buttermilk is very tempting. I've never seen buttermilk in a bottle like this. Because normally, the buttermilk I buy is in a, in a carton, like a paper carton. Then you get like your um, half and half and everything in the carton. Going from where I got this from Whole Foods, and they had this fancy, you know, bottle. And this is like old fashioned, like you know back in the day how you used to get your milk. It would leave it in front of your house in a bottle like this. But this is plastic, it's not glass. This is, and it's really good by the way, it's not the cheap kind, it's like the really good stuff. I paid a good amount of money for that. I'm cooking good, I'm going to add some more of the flour. I'm going to put my pouring shield. I'm not going to use that anymore. Look what happened to your camera. Justin. I'm just going to add the rest of this. Get that in mix. And then I'm going to add... Oh my god, my camera just fell over. We're just gonna go and keep recording. So I added the rest of the flour mixture. Which is just salt, baking soda, and flour. So I'm gonna add the rest of the butter now. Now I'm going to keep mixing this until we get like a nice dough and I'll be right back. Go on. Hello everybody. Hello, she's going to taste this batter. I taste it and this is what it looks like and it's really good. Like. This is really interesting because this is Justin's first ever original recipe. Well not first ever original recipe but that you tweaked I it. tweaked the recipe online yeah. I saw it and I made it better so. Yeah, so we'll see. She's going to taste this and see how good it came out. Well, it's not done, like I have to bake it, but she's going to taste the batter. Mmm. Good, right? Mm -hmm. Now you'll need a cookie sheet. Mm -hmm. I don't have a cookie sheet, I have this baking tray. 
Very Finally, good. it's good. Good. Okay, we'll let the we'll taste the final product when it comes out of the oven. Yep. So I have this bacon sheet. I don't have cookie sheet. I have to invest in getting some lime with parchment paper. You can also use a baking mat if you have. Like I have some in here. I have baking mat, but. Right now I'm just going to use parchment paper, but I do have a few like this one I have right here. And it'll fit, kind of fit on here, a little too wide or whatever. So I'm not going to use it. And plus then I'll have to wash it, whereas the parchment, I can just toss right in the trash. So now what we're going to want to do, take a spoon. Get some cookie and just put it on the tray. Now this dough is going to be very sticky. It's not going to be like bread dough or biscuit dough or like, you know, where it's like kind of like easy to like roll out and to work with because it's like not sticky. This is very sticky as what a lot of typical cookie doughs are. But if you did want to make these into like shapes and stuff, or if you had cookie cutter, add a lot more flour to this so it becomes no more sticky. And it becomes enough to pat and knead and all that. But I like this because I don't have to do all that. I don't have to get a rolling to then roll out the dough. All I can do is make the dough and scoop this. Right on to the pan or to the sheet. So right now I'm only gonna do nine cookies. Now I have my oven preheated to 425. I would normally put it in at 350 but I'm using convection and when you convection bake you put your oven 25 degrees lower because it's using hot air circulation and it's much more hotter than using conventional bake and that's why I put it at 325 and not 350 and plus my oven also is so powerful that it likes to burn everything it's like you're cooking it, your food gets destroyed. You have to like really watch it. I'm gonna put it for eight minutes. And I'm also gonna check on it. I'm using the top of my oven because my oven is um has two oh it fell again. Sorry, it's gonna keep on. That there you go. So as you can see that's my oven. There's two um ovens and one. So this is what I have. And I'm gonna put it top and I'm gonna bake for eight minutes timer eight stop and it counts down I like this oven because the other one we had before you'd see a timer but there was no countdown it would just say like if you put it for 10 minutes it would go 10 and then you would wait and then it would go to nine and then eight to ten where this one it says the time it says 7 minutes and 39 seconds left. It counts down. Which I like better because I know it makes it feel like it's going faster in a way because you see the yeah, countdown and you're not waiting. Like at this clock up here, it says it's 9 15 pm. You're like, when will it be 9 51? And there's no like countdown of like 18 seconds, 17 seconds before the next number comes or goes down. That's why I like it because it has that. So, I'm going to be back when the cookies are done. <laughs> Guys, I'm back. And I forgot to say, I might have to rotate the tray with like four minutes, like at half time. Only because to make sure they evenly cook. Because when you, a normally convection ovens have, like when you go to bakeries or like, especially in the grocery store and you see them making like cookies and bread at the bakery, they're they use convection too, but their ovens spin the food so it evenly cooks, like the baked goods get evenly cooked. Well at home, we don't have one of those 
big gigantic fancy you know convection ovens that have the spinning you know function with and plus they there's no really they don't really have shelving in there like this they just put like on a the the baking trays on a rack and they slide it in the oven like a big heavy duty rack and it cooks and it's on like a plate or something that spins it well this doesn't do that so I'm gonna have to turn it manually but I wish it did, you know, have a spinning function. That would be really cool. They should have <laughs> Samsung or another brand should invent in an oven that has a spinning function with convection. All right, I'm gonna go. So I just flipped over my cookies, like turn them the opposite way to cook evenly. But I didn't mention this, but if you wanna help out, you know, making your cookies more easier to work with before putting on that pan, you can put this in the fridge and chill it till it's really cold. This way it won't be as sticky. Like the coldness will prevent the stickiness. To chill it. And another thing you can do to these cookies. You can definitely make them more fancy. What you can do is add some um, chocolate chips if you want. The mini morsels. You can even go crazy and instead of doing more stores, you can do like break pieces of like chocolate, like real pieces of chopped up chocolate to get like chunk, you know, in your cookie. You can do like M&M's, you can do nuts, like if you have um, walnuts or pecan, do them however you want. But I'm just doing the cookie plain. Can you do two of them with chocolate? They're ready in the oven. I'll do another batch. Okay, my sister just said she wants some chocolate, so I'm going to do. You know what? You can just put them on top. Yeah, I'm gonna put it. Don't worry, my hands are clean. Let me throw some chocolate on. Okay. Be careful. I know what I'm doing. chocolate for her and it's not going well they're falling everywhere I'm trying my best to add the chocolate to the cookie and not just the tray I did my best some fell on the tray I'm gonna let those finish baking out come back when they're all done I said eight minutes but they may need a little bit longer and that's okay and you wanna after a certain amount of minutes flip the trays over so they cook evenly See ya. Alright, I just took these cookies out of the oven and I put chocolate on those too. As a request for my sister. Now you want to let them cool down because if you take one right away, it'll just crumble and fall apart because it hasn't set. You want it to set before you take one. I'm going to let those cool. And yeah, and then this is the rest of my cookie dough. I took it out of my big A-quart mixer bowl and just put it in here. I'm going to put um, some saran wrap over it. Here's the saran wrap that I'm going to put in the fridge. So I'll be back when those have finished cooling. Alright guys, so I let them set and my sister has joined the crew. She heard me say the cookies came out of the oven and I said I have to let them set. Now that they set, we're going to try them. Try them. I'm going to open them up for you to see. Look at that. You got sister. Mmm. Mmm. So good. Mm. Very good. Oh, that's my brother, so he's in the kitchen now. What are you guys saying? What's your reaction? Show them. Show mm. the camera your reaction. It's so like good. It. Is it good? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I need that for milk too. I'm gonna bring him out really good. He like made this like his own recipe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good job, Mr. Hey, it's good. 
Kind of tastes like my scones. Mm-hmm. It kind of tastes like my scones. You dropped the crumb. Look. I'll put that later. Justin, no you're not. Oh, I'm gonna drop it. Mm, 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 mm. Good job, Justin. Thank you. Alright guys, it was such a good video. I'm going to insert the recipe at the end of this video. So if you want to make this recipe, it's super easy. And so when I do... Tell them that when you make it with the chocolate to mix it in, don't put it on top. Probably. Oh yeah, I just put the chocolate chip on top because I already, already put them in the oven, but like mix it in with the batter, so they go you know incorporate well and it bakes in the chocolate because the chocolate here is just on top like that's not really in the cookie. I, I don't know if you can see that, it's just laying on top like I threw it and it didn't even melt in. I can just pull that chocolate off the cookie. But, mix it in the cookie dough. Whatever you do, whether it's chocolate or nuts or anything, mix it in. Alright, so yeah, that was just me making my buttermilk sugar cookies. So I hope you all enjoyed the video, so like, subscribe, comment, and ding the bell. And I'm gonna go and eat some more cookies and edit this video. So, bye!